Mary, still awake? Where were you? At the hospital. It's five in the morning. It was an emergency, Mary. John, I called the hospital. They said you left 12 hours ago. Mary, if you don't believe me, why don't you call Nurse Norse? John, how can you lie to me? Don't my feelings, our years together, our life, our love, our home, everything we've built together mean anything to you? Of course it does, Mary. Then where were you? All right. I was playing cards. <laughs> Snapper had a game. If you don't believe me, call him. I did. He hasn't seen you in weeks. <laughs> you were with a woman, weren't you? Mary, can we talk about this in the morning? Who is she? She isn't anybody. She doesn't exist. John, I want to know. Mary, 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 Mary. What's the difference You're letting your fears run away with you. Can't you accept the love I have for you? Can't you believe that all I want, all I need, all I ever wanted was you? There's no room in my heart for anyone but you. You're all I need, all I want, all I could ever imagine. Why should I ever stray? Where were you? You are so wonderfully vulnerable, so sweet, so sensitive, so very dear to me. Oh, who is she? Don't. Oh, who? Don't, Mary, please. Don't torment yourself like this. Come and sit with me. I'm old now. The two of us, husband and wife, here together. The two of us against the world. Just the two of us, Mary. Everything outside of us. Why, we're one. Indivisible, indissoluble, forever. You won't tell me. No, Mary. Mary, don't you see? Don't you see what I want? I want the kind of love and faith and trust and understanding we've always had. <laughs> Mary, we're deeply in love, unfathomably. We don't need questions. Answers. We don't have to stoop to that. <laughs> you won't tell me. <laughs> Mary, I could. Oh, I could tell you everything, but I will not. Oh. I will not go against the faith, the trust, the understanding. I will not trample on everything that we built up between each other. <laughs> Would you see, Mary? It would cheapen our love, cheapen our marriage. Cheapen, Mary, the tie that binds, the tie, Mary, that binds. Bless be, Mary, bless be. <laughs> Bless be the time that I our hearts in tears love. Sit down, Missy. Thank you. Now what seems to be the trouble? Everything's a big mess, Dr. Rose. I feel like my life is crashing down around my knees and going up in smoke. And I don't know what to do about it. I don't know how to handle it. I can't get a, a grip on it, and I've never felt so desperate. I feel like I'm flying to pieces and being hit by my own shrapnel. <laughs> my daydreams have taken my own life. Who well, referred you to me? Dr. Burns. He's the family GP. But he says I need a specialist. I must remember to thank him. Did he mention my case? He said maybe you could work something out. Well, it's $40 an hour. And an hour is 50 minutes. $40? It's a minimum. But I can't afford that. Well, considering the present state of your mind, I would suggest that you come here at least um, four times a week. But I only take home $80 a week now. Perhaps we could get by with twice a week. But I'll have nothing left to pay rent or buy food. 
Then I guess we'll have to dip into our savings a bit, won't we? I don't have any. Well, perhaps you could get a better job. I'm not qualified. Perhaps you underestimate your abilities. Dr. Rose, I never finished high school. Mm. Well, that was so difficult. There's nights for me. I think I can finish nights. I suppose. Oh, but even so, I can't afford 80 a week now. Why, I'd literally starve. Well, then perhaps you could get a second job. Work days one, nights the other. But I, I thought I was going to night school. And when would I come here? Don't worry, we'll work it out. It's amazing how something that seems impossible one time works out pretty well another. Yeah? I don't see how. Missy, what are your problems? I'm pregnant. Are you married? No. How did that happen? As usual, we slept together. I see. Who's the father? Hank. He's a friend. Do you love him? No. I love Snapper. I see. Who's Snapper? Oh, he's a friend, too. But unfortunately, he loves Joy. Well, Missy, as a general rule, it isn't wise to love those people who don't love you. I know. But what if you can't help yourself? Why doesn't he love me? Why? I ask myself that question a thousand times a day. Why don't you try asking him? Why he doesn't love me? Are you crazy? I can't do that. I can't ask him that. We haven't dated in two years. Not since he married Gwen. Missy, don't you think it might be time to forget Snapper? <laughs> but he's got everything. Hmm. Looks personality, good sense of humor, good values, good job, nice clothes. And he's nice. Where am I going to find that? Oh, well, there are always other fish in the sea. Not like my red snapper. <laughs> Missy, there's a type of person who consciously or unwittingly goes through life looking for something they feel they need, a need to be loved. I need to be close to another living human being. Oh, yes. But sometimes, Missy, that need, that almost addictive craving, comes to become distorted. Inverted. Perverted. This person becomes progressively regressive, starts to wear her heart on her sleeve, tends to retreat from the more mature form of genital object-oriented sexuality into anality, orality, inversion, perversion, narcissism, pedophilia. What I'm trying to tell you, Missy, is that all of the evidence points to the fact that when you were younger, much younger than you ever thought it was possible to be, there were certain things about yourself that you didn't face up to. You dodged the issue. You took a detour, so to speak. You traveled down the wrong path. Came to a fork in the road. Took the wrong exit. Passed the right. Or no. Missed the boat. Hit the brick wall. Came right back to where you started. So to speak, but by then it was too late. Too late for what, Dr. Rose? Next week. <laughs> There's something I think you should know. Brad, are you listening? Yeah, Jean, yeah. Brad, this is serious. We have to talk. You know my money, my inheritance? Uh-huh. Well, it's all gone. Stop kidding around. We have four points for the game. I'm yeah. not. It's gone, card, Brad. Friendly. All I have left is my Great furniture and my clothes. You've got to be kidding. I wish I were. <laughs> are you kidding? How did it go so fast? Well, it wasn't fast, Brad. Uh, it was gradual. Uh, over the last six months. I just didn't want to tell you because I didn't want you to worry. Am I kidding? 
Well, how did it happen? I mean, where did it all go? Bad investments. I made bad investments, Brad. I, I've been operating on rather poor advice. I'll say. You didn't ask me for mine. You, you tell me you don't have any more money. It doesn't matter, does it, Brad? We still have each other. Oh, nothing important has changed. You do still feel the same way about me, don't you? Huh. Do you still love me? I guess that's it for the good scotch. You want some? No, Brad, no, you, you finish it. Brad. I think I'd like to get married. I think we know each other and our feelings well enough. I'd like us to build something permanent. To have a foundation we know is there. Something concrete we can take a stand on. Oh, I know you feel it's just an empty ritual and a piece of paper doesn't really mean anything. And maybe it doesn't. But maybe it does. Brad, I think it does. I see it as a demonstration of trust. A manifestation in our faith in each other's integrity and good intentions. It's a gesture of stability in a changing world. A sign of commitment with no reservations and no easy outs. I'm a woman, Brad. I need that. Are men so very different? you got to be kidding. Oh, I'm kidding to love me for my personal qualities. Yeah. Well, they haven't changed. I'm still the same person I was yesterday. I haven't changed one iota. Maybe you just look different. Do I? Well, Brad, if I do, it's, a, it's a, just a change in appearance. Because basically, I'm still the same person, honest. Oh, I still feel the same. I still think the same. I, I look and see and touch and feel and believe and behave and care and, and everything just the same as I did when I had all my money. I'm still the same Jean Cunningham you've known the whole time. Sorry to hear about your bad luck, Jean. You should let me invest your money. I tried. I guess you had your doubts. None. None, Brad. Not any. I just didn't want money to be part of our relationship. <laughs> so it's true. Maxine was right about you. It's true that you were lying about telling me the truth when all the time it was lies, lies, lies. Oh, what a fool I've been. Blinded by love and infatuation. I loved you with all of me, with every fiber of my being. I loved you totally, utterly, completely, entirely, holding no part of me back. And all I get by way of reciprocity is your amused contempt. Why don't you pull yourself together? Oh, I can <laughs> Love, great fool. I saw you through rose-colored glasses. I thought you saw me through them, too. I tried. <laughs> you money-grubbing worm. You used me like a ripe melon and then threw away the rind. Oh, you got what you could out of me and then you tossed me down the incinerator to smolder and burn all alone like an old tin can. Aren't you exaggerating a little? I can't tell you the contempt I have in store for you. The gulf that separates us. How wide my loathing is. How deep my disgust. How thickly you curdle my blood. We are finished, you creep. We're through. Are you finished? Are you through? If you are, I shall be going. Oh, that's right. You go ahead. Just get out. But I have news for you. I haven't lost all my money. It's all still in the bank. I was just testing you, Brad. I was testing your love for me. Guess I don't have to tell you how you scored. Zero. Zilch. Why are you playing games with me, Jane? Goodbye, Brad. What, what, what are you talking about? I mean, what, what are you trying to do? It's too late, Brad. I can explain. <laughs> I can explain everything. That's that. Just as stubborn once he used. That's right, Brad. I'm sorry, Jean. I'm sorry you misunderstood. Get out. I'm sorry you didn't think I was good enough for you until you lost your money. What are you trying to pull now? What, what am I trying to... What are you trying to pull? You don't bring up marriage until you tell me you lost your money. You know what I thought? I thought, huh? 
<laughs> Before, when she had money, she never pushed for marriage. Now that she's broke, now I'm good enough for her. You creep, I was texting you. Oh, I didn't know that. How could I know that? I thought you changed your mind about me because you lost your money. Do you expect me to believe that? What? Well, put yourself in my place for a change. It wouldn't seem that way to you. Stop being so goddamn selfish and put yourself in somebody else's shoes for a change. You mean, now that you know that I was just testing you, now you'd marry me? Marry in a second. Well, sure you would, because now I still have all my money. That's not the case. How can I make you see that? Well, suppose you're just saying that. Suppose you're lying. I'll cut that out. Well, how do I know? Because I say so. Because I love you. You think you're the only woman in the world with money? There are plenty of women in the world with money. A lot more money than you got. But I choose you, Jean. You. And not for your filthy money. I choose you because I... I dig you. Well, how could I trust you? You, me? Me, you? Do I test you? <laughs> do, I, do I play games with you? Do I lie about my finance? Do I play games with you? I'm the one who should be worrying about trusting, Jean. Me, not you. You really mean what you say? Do you really love me? How can I make you believe that? Oh, Brad, I'm sorry I doubted you. I'm so sorry. I'm so terribly sorry. Oh, gee, Brad. It's such a nice night. I remember when I was a little girl wondering how big the sky was. Did you ever wonder how big the universe was, Brad? Now, how could that be if things weren't right? Everything, I mean. And yet sometimes it seems like the world is on the edge of chaos with everybody's hopes going down the drain. Poor Tess is on the verge of death. What's going to happen to her? And is Missy right to see a psychiatrist? Or would that only make more trouble for her? And what about poor Mary Burns? Does John really love her? Or will all those years end up with her being given the shaft? I just can't believe that life always ends up with everyone getting the shaft. I just won't believe that. Does he really love me? How will it turn out for Brad and me? Mm -hmm.